Hello my lovelies, welcome back to the channel Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator This is in the playlist for flat renovation and you're seeing it because it's a follow on from previous video there where we did some wall, I'll, I'll call it wall cladding stroke shaker style panelling it was just from B&Q, 25 quid it wasn't even that, it was about £24 and got me 10% discount and I fitted it in the last video. You can see what we do. Now, this is the up to date video. God, obviously. What we're going to do, we're going to prime all the MDF. We're going to prime the MDF and we're going to prime ooh, sunshine and we're going to prime the top edges. Um, I'm a big I say advocate, I don't want to say advocate. Before you do any filling, always prime, prime, your, prime your substrates, prime your surfaces. There's very, very few times that there's a certain material that you use for filling up that says don't prime beforehand. But on this instance, we're only looking at MDF. It's nothing complicated, nothing, nothing complicated at all. So where we've got little bits of gaps, pin heads where we've used that, how good was that nail gun? Now gone. Where we've got pinheads, bit of corking up that's going to be needed to be done. I'm going to prime everything first, and that will only mean the MDF and the softwood top rails. Once I've done that, as long as I've got enough paint, I'll be doing what I normally do. Where I've got all the woodwork, see like the doors, frames and stuff like that. Where it's been, I've rubbed them all down, I've washed it all down, I've gone around with some kitchen cleaning solution in some warm water managed to find a kettle boil some water because I've got no got no running water and I brought a five litre canister up with me for water so I've washed everything down all my woodwork's all clean what, I, what I've been doing because it's been oil eggshell previously I've been going around with using Zinza 123 plus just as a grip base coat primer and once that's on and it's dry, I'm working over the top of that with whatever paint system or paint that I'm using for each room. Because as I've said in the previous videos, I'm trying to do different paints, trying different paints out that I've probably tried on Doris the Door on the product testing, and I'm trying it in the real world. So this job's in this area isn't really any different. I've got, I'm going to call it my Pelican pot with the liner that you saw on the videos there where I've done the place in the sun playlist. I've got my paint in there ready now and I'm using, and I don't know whether you've seen the review on it yet, I'm not sure whether you might have done or maybe not. I've got some lip brushes. Mm, matron. Mm, give it a lick. Not doing that. And I'm trying out and I've been using it in the other parts of the rooms where I'm actually coating out using 123 plus on the rub down woodwork. I've been trying it, so I know what it's like. I'm gonna try it in here and give you a little bit of a review if you've not seen the review of lit brushes. Oh, you know what I mean. Well, anyway, lit brushes, I'll just quickly, um, bamboo handle. They've got recycled materials, so bamboo is recyclable. The metal ferrules already been recycled. The packaging it comes in is recycled. The bristles, I don't know what they're made of. The, the flagged hammered end tips and whatever they are. And this is a two inch. Let me use it and then I'll just give you a bit of a brief thought on what I think to that lick brush. But I am trying it out and um, let's see how we go. Do you want to see me doing a bit of painting? I'll fast forward it through. Go on then. Moved you down. And I'm going to say, right there, guys and gals. This isn't, this isn't complicated. Let's not overcomplicate it. Here's my MDF. That MDF top rail, you know, because I told you in the last video I needed an extra pack and the top capping trim. Trim. I hate that word. Um, came in as MDF, whereas everything else was softwood pine. Well, I'll say pine, it's probably not pine, it's just softwood. So, all I'm going to do, I'm literally painting these, not doing these main panels. That will be when I come to a doing undercoat, building up for the paint that's going on there. And the paint that will be going on there, I'm going to use some Valspar. Yes, a Valspar eggshell, and it's a 
quite a bold colour, that's all I'm going to say. So um, let me do this bit of painting and then we'll come back at the end. Load your brush up. This is done in no particular order, so um, it's just so you can see it. Not watching paint dry. The brush is set up, I've been talking to you too long, I've got to bed it back in. Don't worry if you go on to the uh, woodwork around. It's not going to worry me, because I'm going to be doing that anyway. And I am going actually onto the wall and I'll scrub it out so it's not a fat edge. Going onto the wall there because the top edge there will need to be corked. These edges around there will all need to be corked. We'll see. So we will go on to that to give the base grip or whatever you want to call it. So we will go on to that and then we can cork up. That'll be on another video, getting it ready for undercoating. There we go. What a skilled painter I am. How quick have I been doing that from it fading out to that to this? I've done all that and I've actually I've got enough still in the tin of my Zinza 123 that I'm using as the primer. So what I did, I've blanked out, you can't probably see it, I blanked out the main panels as well. And when I mean blanked out, I've put the 123 over those centre panels ready for when they get painted. Now, it was pulling, because I used it neat straight out of the tin. So what I did, I put a bit of water into it when it came to these panels, and just brushed it on. It was drying that quick. I couldn't even do a crow's nest layoff. Jobs are gone, I couldn't even do that. So literally, I put it on in a crow's nest fashion, like you would do with a, an emulsion paint, and I've let it go at that. With it being that little bit thinner, it's soaked in and it's quite nicely covered but I'm going to tell you because I always say to you prime before you fill now one of the reasons that you prime before you fill is I can now see you probably can't but I can I can see all the pin heads I can see all the joints I can see anywhere that actually needs filling which prior to me actually putting that coat of paint on I knew where they were, but this has highlighted and then hello, woo, highlighted them and made it easier to actually spot. So when I come round with the filler, and I'm not going to do it today. This is nearly dry, but it's not dry enough. I'm going to come back. I've had enough today. I've been really busy. I'm going to come back tomorrow. To, tomorrow, I'll call it, come back tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to come back tomorrow. And any of these joints here, can you see? I think you can see them. I'm going to get them filled up. Now I've got some two pack filler with me. The big ones are probably two pack filler and then the smaller ones which are more the puncture marks where the nail gun's been. I've got some fine surface filler for that. I'll also go around all these edges across the tops and the sides. I'll just cork them all in. Now MDF, it's a bit of a pig. It's a bit of a pig really. You bear MDF edges like the edges there, the nine mil edge get a coat of paint on them and sand them down. Each time you get a coat of paint on, sand them down, you'll get them nice. Sometimes they can be quite rough and you want to put some filler across it and then sand it, you can do. But MDF, you can get it quite nice. You can get it quite nice. Particularly with what we're using, we're just using water-based paints. So by the time I come tomorrow and get these filled up, I'll talk to you tomorrow about it. We'll get them filled up. I'll show you what it's actually looking like. Because tomorrow, I would actually like, I really like to get a coat of paint on these you call them the filling parts of a wall. So you've got your dado here, and you've got your panels, but above the dado rail would be filling, fill in, Philip, Philip, I'm Philip, I'm Phil. I won't mind getting a coat on there 
just to see what it's looking like. And again, once I get a coat on, I can see any imperfections in the wall. And if I need to just touch them in with a bit of a fine surface filler I can do, then spot prime. Now, you know how much work's been done on this flat. I'm doing a kitchen, I'm doing a bathroom. I've got stuff that's going to be coming in and out. I'm thinking of bringing this area forward, albeit the final coat, but I'll see how I feel. Do you know what? Get a good night's sleep and I'll see you in a split second blending out, but it'll be tomorrow. I might even wear the same shirt so I know which videos I've got to edit at what time. I find that really difficult, you know, when I've got a load of videos all on the camera. I need to wear different clothes so I know which section it needs to be at. Oh, it's a nightmare. First world problems. See ya. So, I've finished all my panelling. I've even got a coat on these um, middle sections. But you wanted to know what the brush was like, that lick brush. Now, I don't think it was too bad at all. If you're a person who likes the feel of a brush that's more traditional, like a pure bristle brush, this is what you'd probably love. For me, I'll sit on the fence a little, a little bit. I do like my Arrowworthies. I do like my Arrowworthy for the bristle. And there's some other brushes that I've tried recently that are quite nice as well. But these, I'm not, I'm not too sure. This was a two inch that I've used for just banging paint on. Now, I don't think it's in the league of an Arrowworthy for using to apply finish paints. And when I mean finish paints, when you're doing your, your second, your first and second of your top coats of your satins or your like, I don't think I'd use it for that. What I would use this brush for is like what I've been doing with these panels. Let's see, I've got panels. Emulsion painting. I think these are more geared up for emulsion paint. Just to feel how the brush is, I would probably use it more for cutting in and obviously applying emulsion paint, more so than a, a woodwork paint, i.e. And I'm going to use the word trim because you might be in America listening. A trim paint. I don't like that word. Also, all right, I just get the negatives out of the way. Right, negative, I don't like a shiny handle. I found the handle was a little bit short and shiny. It was slipping in my hands when I was trying to apply it, um, paint, when I was trying to apply paint to main doors, uh, like just, just there. You see it just there. So what I did, I'd not been doing much painting before I got some sandpaper out on it and sanded it down so it wasn't so slippy in my hands. But other than that, I've applied paint, I've banged paint on with it, and it does what it needs to do. It's got me the paint on, it holds paint nicely, it applies the paint all right. I did find that, I mean, I've used this virtually the best part of the day, the bristles probably are clogging together. For laying off, it didn't really give me that smooth laying off finish that I'd expect from, I'd say a quality brush, I mean, they're not cheap and cheerful, are they? It's a quality brush. It's not an arrow worthy sort of layoff sort of bristle. I don't know why. I mean, they're supposed to be a flagged end. I don't know what the makeup of the bristle is. But going back to the eco, an eco um, brush, it is an eco brush. I think really it's probably the new generation of an eco union. And I love eco union brushes and I can't get eco union brushes anymore. I think this is what is an eco union brush. Correct me if I'm wrong. I like an Eco Union brush four inch for emulsioning walls, cutting in, it's lovely. Can't seem to get one. But I'm trying these out because are these the next best thing? I'm not sure. They might be ideal for emulsioning. What they're not so good, particularly this two inch. It's quite a thick, it's plenty of bristle. It's like a traditional brush. It's not good. It's not as easy to apply paint with if you're trying to do a finished paint, if that makes sense. Give us some comments if you don't understand what I'm on about. But other than that, bamboo handle, recycled metal ferrule, bristles, it's not a bad brush at all. I think if you were using it for the lick paints, doing the emulsions and stuff, it'll be ideal. It'll be interesting to see what my lick three inch brush is like, and also I've got a slash cut for cutting in, but they'll be on future videos. But for now, it's done what it needed to do. It's coated me up the panels, it's applied paint in a volume manner that I needed to get paint on a surface, but it's not a brush that I would want to be doing for the finished paints. I hope that's not, I don't want to be too negative because I mean, it's a nice brush, I've got used to it. The handles are probably a little bit short for me because I'm getting used to the longer handles now with some of the other brushes that are coming through. But other than that, it's done what it needed to do and I'm happy and I've got the paint on. 
So yeah, give them a try. Let let me know what you think. Well, you know what I mean. Comments. Here we are, another day. It's like a microwave video, isn't it? Microwave sleep. You've just seen me one day and now I'm back the next day and it blends together lovely. Right, what I was going to do yesterday that I couldn't do because all this lot was drying and I gave it overnight. I want to now get these joints filled. Now, the joints that are a bit bigger, that I don't want to put any fine surface filler in, I've got some two pack wood filler, straightforward, don't matter what brand you use. This is the Ron Seal, other brands are available. And it'll be a case of just getting a little bit of that out, mixing it with the two pack hardener, you know, that stuff that you never get the quantities right and it dries off on you too quick. So I'm, I'll mix a little bit up, I'll do all these deep filling. I won't make it too proud, but I'll give enough that I can rub it down and if it needs a bit of a fine surface over the top, I can do later. Once I've done all these, I'm, I'm trying to use stuff I've got as samples and bits and pieces. I've got the isomat, I've got the acrylic stucco fine surface filler, which will be ideal for just where these pin heads are from the nail gun going in. So hopefully, just skim those over with a, oh, I've just, I've just got a basic filling knife because I've got basic tools because I've already got my basic tools on this job at the moment. They're all on the van. So I've just got a basic filling knife. Um, just make sure you've got a clean edge, sand it down so it's not scratching at anything. And it'll be a case of just filling over them lightly once they've dried. And because that's an acrylic watery base, that won't take long to dry. You can just give them a fine nib down with a bit of, I've got me, you know what I like, Merca Gold Flex. That's a, a 150. Just slightly sand them down. And then you can just, if they need a second fill, you can just go around and give them a second fill. That's not a problem. The other thing that I'm going to be doing, and I'll show you how to do it in a moment, I've got my, you know, my favourite cork. I don't think, can you buy any better cork than that? I mean, it's a couple of quid a tube, it's not very expensive. The Red Devil one time filler, stroke, I'll say cork filler. Um, one time, it's interior exterior, there's a flexibility to it, I find this is really good, it dries quite quickly within half an hour and I can be painting it, I can be spraying it and I don't, I don't see that crazing and crosling. I don't know why, it's, it's good stuff. What I want to do is, where you've got your raw edges, now I'll, I'll say there, because that's the cut edge of an MDF. I've just got a rubbing block again. It's one of my samples from the decorating show. I'm trying to use stuff up, real world testing. Just go around gently and just sand lightly that edge, that furry edge. And that, because it had the one, two, three on yesterday, feel, well, I feel, I won't say smooth as a baby's bottom, but feels silky, silky. Feels really nice. So just go around lightly, just rubbing those edges down. And then what I will be doing is going with a cork, just neatly corking that edge in, beading it round. Just lick your finger, just wet it in. Some people would go around with a, a chisel, an inch chisel knife and make it a squared off edge. Experience shows that that doesn't get enough cork into that bit of a gap and it can pull away. So I'd rather have it in with a slight, I'll say concave, it's not gonna be that thick but a slight concaved cork edge, wet with my finger and just smooth in and let it go at that. Same with the corner angles, like up in the top. If you wanted it squared off, get a sharp squared off chisel knife and square it out, but I'm not, I'm not too worried on this. I just wanna make sure it's in and it's filled and it looks neat. So um, bear with me, I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna get my stuff made up and then you'll see me just filling these and I'll do the whole room so you're not bored. That'll be off camera. So I went round using up all the two pack filler that I got and then anything else I've just got round with the isomat fine surface so they're drying off nicely i know they'll sink slightly and it'll be a case of just double filling but i'm happy with that i've got time to allow that to double sink if you've got some comments on a filler that doesn't sink do you want to give some comments below 
Does the Red Devil one time filler that doesn't sink, does it? That stays in place. Could have used that, couldn't I? Never mind. But my idea is once these are rubbed down and we nib down this MDF, it'll be lovely and smooth, and um, we can get another coat. What I'll do, I'll give it a second coat of one, two, three bullseye over it just to build it up and also to help prime out these filler areas. So that'll be the that'll be the base coats for the future eggshells that are going over the top. What I'm going to show you now, I've rubbed all these edges down as well, done all that, I've gone all the way around the room doing the same thing. I'm just going to show you corking up. Now, dust it off, make sure it's dust off. Not that there's a lot of dust there, but it's literally a fine bead of the cork. Make sure you're ready to go. Put it in place. Are you ready? One, two, three. Caught from the bottom, done. Lick your finger, smooth it in. Wipe the excess off your finger on the carpet. Don't worry about having new carpets. That's why the carpets are still down. And go all the way around. Easy as that. You can if you want, and Brian who works for us, he goes around with a bucket of water and a cloth and he goes with a damp cloth and wipes it instead of licking his finger or using the bucket of water to wet his finger and do it. I only find that if you use a cloth it seems to pull out more than what I want. So if you use your finger it smooths it quite easily without dragging anything out. So that's why I just use a wet finger. So if you have got a bucket of water to wet your finger in, brilliant. Or Simple as that, all the way around. If you miss a bit, supply a bit more. Get into the corners. So that's where we are with it. Put it in that corner. What I'll do, I'm going to go around all of it now not forgetting that bottom edge don't forget the top edge and if you remember when I fitted the panelling that was on a previous video is it there I've actually put this panelling kit on a little bit of a riser that's just on the top edge you see it was just on that top edge there I'll make sure that I caught that top edge of the skirting against that bit of a riser before it goes onto the panelling kit. So I'm going to do all that and then once it's um, dried we'll rub it down and we can get another coat on it. Do you want to see that or not? Probably not. So yeah. just let me crack on. So there we have it peeps. You've seen me go round, done the filling up, done the corking up and what I said I'd do off camera and I've done it. I've coated it all up with the one, two, three. This is actually one, two, three plus. First time round I used one, two, three. I ran out, so now I'm on me one, two, three plus, which I'm not too um, not too shabby really, because I had got some pencil marks showing through. And I'm hoping this, because it's a bit of a blocking primer, will stop anything like that coming through. But it's all hypothetical because if you know what colour was going on all this panelling around here, <laughs> I don't think anything's going to show through it anyway. But there we are. I'm going to wind up this section of my video on the flat revamp. We've done all this panelling now. The next time you'll see this panelling is when I'm going to be putting some undercoat on to bring it forward to the top satin finishes. Now, as I said earlier and in previous videos, some of these rooms I'm going to be bringing up to a finish and leaving the final coat until I've got bathroom suites gone in, kitchens gone in, because you know what all the trades are like, they're not very careful, are they, when it comes to finished paintwork. But I can bring these up to a, a first undercoat, which will be probably a dark grey, and then the colour that's going over it's like a, a dark blue. So I can bring a couple of coats of blue over the top, knowing that, because I want to get the build up, I want to get the build up, I know that if I put an undercoat on and two top coats, and then leave a third top coat, 
just in case it gets damaged, I'm not going to worry about it. And you're going to say, why are you putting three top coats on? I can put three top coats on, and I want to try and get this as near, I don't say near perfect, it's not going to be near perfect. These panels are a little bit orange peely from that original contract mat going on. I can give a little bit of a sand down before I actually put some finished coats on, but I'm just thinking, try and get some build up on that MDF. I've got the time to do it. I'll give it one undercoat. I know these have had two primers. That's because of the filler but they'll be having one undercoat and probably two and then a third top coat when everything's done and I can actually get everybody out of the way and just do some finishing coats. But there'll be some videos coming up there. I'll just finish off. The next time you'll probably see this room is when we're talking about doing the filling, painting, and I'm going to do that next after this, after I've done the filming with you, videos. Um, Valspar. So if you want to know about Valspar, Watch these videos there and we'll move on to the next video, which will be a Valspar one. See you later.